Hey everyone, it's Kay. So as I'm sure you've noticed, you're not looking at me, you're actually looking at the FL Sun Cube. I've got a lot of requests from you guys to do an overall walkthrough of the printer as well as talk over some first prints and show you guys the homing, which is great. So we'll go over all of that today. But first I have to come clean a little bit. I recently had an issue with the Z motor controller. Uh, it's down in here. As you can see, the Z motor controller of course controls, oh, sorry. Uh, controls two motors, of course, and I had an issue where it blew out. Now, I'm not sure if that was an issue due to overheating or not being able to take, you know, two motors at a time. I'm not sure, but I did reach out to FL Sun and they're sending me replacement. So I'll keep you guys updated on everything that happens with them. That'll be on my Facebook page. I'll leave a link down in the description if you haven't checked that out yet. Um, and then I'll just post updates when, as they come, really. I'm not sure exactly how long it'll take to arrive, but I did want to put this video out with everything that I had. I knew you guys were wanting to see some stuff, so we're just gonna roll with it. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the hot end, which of course is the most important. Uh, so here you have, I'm trying to get it to focus a little bit better. Uh, here you have, of course, the hot end, the heater, um, and the thermistor coming in here. This is all very easy to put together. Here, of course, is the auto probe, the Z probe. And it's been working great. Um, I have seen mounts where that the 3D print where you can adjust it up or down. So that's something I may try at a later time. Of course, there's a fan here. Uh, right here to the side, you have your X and stop. And, oh, sorry, the X motor is mounted right here. And there's a belt going between. I also saw upgrades um, that you could print for belt tensioners, something I might look into. Oh, this is just as tight as I could get them, but they seem to be functioning fine as loose as they are. And oh, right in the back is the Y motor. And then, of course, down here, you have two Z motors and two screw rods. I've heard that some Cartesians, remember this is my first, some Cartesians only have one screw rod. I would think that that would lead to an unlevel bed, but this is working great with the two of them. Uh, the bed is mounted on these rods here, and then underneath, let me get to focus, underneath you have screws that have springs attached to them to help with leveling the bed. I have to say, honestly, um, the fact that you can adjust, there, there's a little, you know, a, a washer nut down there, uh, where you can, uh, I'm sorry, you can't see it, there, on the other side, you can see it, um, where you can adjust the bed up or down, and you can do that on each four corners, so leveling this bed has to be the easiest. Um, definitely, you have to keep in mind that you have a screw in each, um, I can't remember, I think I think I had like 230 millimeters between screws, so that's actually the print volume. I probably will be getting an additional surface for it at some point. Just keep in mind you can't use glass. I did see someone using a mirror because that reflects the beam for the sensor. Um, if you were using the manual calibration, you should be able to use glass fine, but I'm not, so I won't get glass. Um, let's see here. Uh, the bed does scratch up, so it, it doesn't really affect print volume, or I'm sorry, print quality. If you put your hand over it, you know, you can't feel them, but you can see them, so it's an aesthetic thing. So far, I've just been printing right onto the bed using glue. Um, I did use tape as well, but I like the smoother finish that I get with, you know, printing with glue, so that's been fine. Let's see here. Up here is the LCD screen. Uh, the LCD screen, the power supply, the board and the filament support, which is right back here. Uh, all of those are adjustable, so you can put them where you want them. If you don't want them on the printer at all, that's fine, but it does come with mounts for everything, which I think is great. Uh, the power supply is right back here. Uh, what else? What else is there? Uh, there's the end stops. So this would be the manual Z end stop. I just have it mounted, even though I'm not using it. It's not plugged in, uh, but just in case I do, you know, want to use it or something, I didn't want to lose it or anything like that. Over here is the the Y end stop, um, and those are pretty adjustable too. So if you needed to move them up or down, of course you can. 
Um, the overall build is pretty good. Um, my only issue is back here with the extruder. Uh, there you can kind of see it's in the back here. So I don't really like the whole gear design. I mean, I'm sure you can see it's a PTFE tube. It's about an extruder. But the design they have with the gear and working the filament back in there. Let me see if I can get it. Yeah, there you go. So the, just the overall design makes it kind of hard to load filament in. It's not undoable, but in the past I've tried to do multicolor prints with a lot of success uh, just by clipping off the end of one filament and feeding in the other. I don't think I could do this with this one. I think that it would take me too long to angle it in there right. There's too many ways to angle it in the wrong way. So I don't really think that that's <laughs> really a possibility. I did get a request from you guys to um, to take a look at the homing procedure and of course because I can't control the Z motors I can't do that right now but I do have a clip of one of the times that I was homing it so I'm gonna go ahead and insert that here I do want you to be able to see it so enjoy All right, so that was the homing procedure. I wish I could you know, do it a little bit better for you guys, but that's what I have right now until I get the extra uh, motor controllers. I did want to talk over, though, uh, the print quality for the prints that I had. Um, I wish I could print some more for you guys, but uh, right now this is where we're at. Uh, this was the very first print that I had ever done. Uh, it is just a calibration cube. Uh, as you can see at the bottom, it has a little bit of elephant foot and essentially um, that's just because the Z offset was set so it was too close to the bed using the auto probe. Uh, when I went in and adjusted the Z offset that definitely helped but essentially it was too close to the bed and it squished that plastic out into this nice little elephant foot we've got going on there. Um, but the rest of it is pretty clean. I was really happy um, to see that it was printing well other than that. Um, next, I wanted to show you guys, um, this was a failed print, but as I was still trying to get the bed to level and, and get everything right, um, I just wanted to show you guys essentially what that looks like. So I don't know if you can see, but this side here is actually um, transparent. It was so close to the bed that it wasn't able to actually get any plastic on into like the third layer, while as this side is perfect. So you can even see in the patterns down here, I was printing once again on glue. Parts of it are printing perfectly, parts of it are not, and then some of it, it's not even extruding at all because it's too close to the bed. So this was back before um, I got everything adjusted, and of course, you know, the print failed. So I stopped it, but I wanted to show you guys kind of what that looks like. You know, when you take a, a print off and you can see that there's uh, a line going down through it, then you know that one side is higher than the other, and you should be able to tell what side too. So that's a failed print. This was printed in Inland Gray, PLA. Uh, one of my more successful prints right here, um, it's the Heat Wave Vase. I'll put the links in the description. All of these were found on Thingiverse. Um, so I'll put the link to the description of this, or I'm sorry, <laughs> link to the Thingiverse of this in the description. There we go. Um, but I'm really happy with this. There are, if you look on the inside, some issues with um, with retraction. So I'll work on those settings. But I'm really happy with how this turned out with the quality on this. I think it printed in like two two hours and some change. So a little over two hours. But overall, really excited about this. Um, I'm sorry I don't have them with me, but I did print a few other items that we actually use for uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so little figures and that kind of thing. And the overall quality was pretty good. Um, it looks like it did have some issues with bridging for swords and that kind of a thing, but that could also be related back to the model, so I'm not going to judge it too hardly on that. Um, I will have to test the bridging at some point just for curiosity's sake. So that about wraps it up. I thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have been getting involved. If you have any requests, uh, please let me know. 
Uh, I Even though I'm not able to work with the FL Sun Cube, I still have other projects that are going to be coming out while we're waiting. So that's pretty much everything. So I thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you with the next project. Oh,